good morning to all of you particularly for the professional ethics students yesterday we discussed section 49 section 49 class 1 sub class c of the advocates act 1961 it gives or it empowers the bar council of india to make rules what for to the uh, regarding the standards of the professional conduct and also ethics professional conduct and ethics and also etiquette to be observed by the advocates right so please remember the bar council of india under section 49 can make rules so with uh, that power so they have got made rules and you can find them under uh, under chapter 2 part 6 of the bca rules there are about 52 rules uh, of course some of them are important some of them are not, not that important anyway it was divided into chapters also the first chapter includes so the first chapter tells about duties to the word the court duties to court so there are 10 rules in this aspect and uh, let us quickly go through the rules because you have to so why what for the professional ethics professional ethics are there to make you a very good advocate so if you follow the ethics particularly professional ethics uh, definitely you will become a diamond in the legal profession therefore please follow the rules right now we will go to rule number 1 so an advocate should conduct with dignity and self respect during the presentation of the case or otherwise also he has to maintain the so called dignity at the same time he should not lose self respect suppose if there any if there is a ground for a pro complaint against the judiciary or a judge definitely he has got a duty to submit his grievance to the proper authorities you need not become servile or you need not be a servant to the judge second point have respectful attitude towards the court after all who are they the court consists of the judiciary you are an advocate all of you are the legal fraternity you are the brethren if you don't respect your own brother who else is going to respect it so always have a respectful attitude towards the court there may be a b c or judges we are not bothered but an advocate is required a respectful attitude in mind towards the court and the dignity of the judicial office higher essential to perform the judicial functions number 3 this is another good suggestion don't try to influence the court by illegal or improper means illegal and improper means please don't try to influence the court because a judge always always we also be telling about the judges also judges they need not uh, openly tell as to what type of persons are there their judgment will declare their judgment will disclose what type of person he is what knowledge he has got likewise advocate uh, you have to take the case logically to the end you have to argue the case very efficiently with eloquence all these things but uh, don't use the so called illegal or improper means illegal means bribing improper means so touching the relatives of the so called judge and uh, influencing them through that like that so don't do such things then <clears throat> fourth so in this connection please refer to rizwanullah hasan versus state of up 1953 actual rizwanullah hasan case relating to a district magistrate and a uh, regular magistrate the dispute between them some uh, letter has been sent i will tell you in detail in the class about the case law then fourth not only you don't practice the illegal improper methods to influence the court you have to prevent your client also from resorting to unnecessary or unfair practices so clients are also ordinary people they also try to the normal they will come to you say that judge is related to so and so he will hear so and so words this clerk is very close to the judge so don't entertain him you have to prevent you have to use your best efforts to restrain and prevent your client from resorting to unfair practices right and at the same time you don't become the mouthpiece of the client so you know what is law you have to tell what is necessary and what is necessary not necessary before the court but you need not tell all these things so at the time of pleadings also i told you you need not become the mouthpiece you have to represent the matter which is necessary or which is essential towards the court that's all then point number 5 the advocate shall appear in the court all times in the prescribed dress and his appearance shall always be presentable please remember presentable dress means you need not wear the branded clothes or branded shoes or something so the dress you wear should be 
neatly pressed and the you should be cleanly shaved the hair cutting also should be proper so the shoes should shine and the dress should be presentable that's all so don't be under the impression that you're wearing the so called burberry or super dry clothes your uh, impression will be there no please maintain the dress in a presentable way that's all then rule number 6 the advocate should not appear in a case where your relatives are the parties so for example your father mother son grandson uncle brother aunt niece father in law mother in law oh, if all of them are involved in a case don't appear for or against both for or against you cannot appear because it gives the against to the second uh, first principles of uh, natural justice you should not be a judge in your own case and there is a chance that he may try to influence the judge by saying sir he is my father he is my son like that so therefore not advisable number 7 so please remember i have already told you that you have to wear the proper dress but this dress should not be worn outside what they not to wear bands or gowns in the public place except on ceremonial occasions so whenever you go out you can wear the so called blazer but not the bands bands is more important and also the gown so it gives you the power it gives you the sanctity to appear in the court so outside the court don't wear them then eight don't appear in the court on behalf of an organization in which you are interested or in which you are a man you are a member right other for or against this is also so when there is some company wherein you are a sleeping member then also you should not represent that case in the court then rule number 9 not to plead in any manner in which he is pecuniary interested suppose uh, you want to represent a uh, <coughs> margadashi company so if you are interested pecuniarily if you have invested some money in margadashi you should not appear because normally the conflict of interest will be there and lastly number 10 <coughs> advocate shall not stand as a surety or certify the soundness of the surety before the court because surety is a different aspect it is for you as a client to procure the surety but uh, you should not certify the surety and you should not try to do big thing get dubious methods in securing the false sureties i have seen right in front of my office uh, an advocate was there he worked as secretary of the bar association also but since he has uh, procured the false uh, securities and the judge has asked and the judge had asked him to come uh, uh, come and appear before the court he felt annoyed ultimately of course there may be so many other reasons but one of the reasons is this for his committing suicide he died so such should not be the criteria don't resort to that things so with this few uh, up to rule 1 to 10 i will stop and we will discuss the cases later thank you very much